exhaustion. I'm the Frank Fryer. Let's get frank about it. Hey, Carmelos. I invite you now to leave a comment down below. Let me know maybe how your lens going and et cetera, and where there's point of exhaustion starting to kick in, and maybe we can get a good conversation going where we can help each other to get over this little hump of exhaustion. And if you haven't yet, I please invite you to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me. Thanks again. So exhaustion. This is something I want to talk about because, you know, I'm not even a year now as a priest, and uh, people are I'm somewhat curious in, in a healthy way on what, you know, priests do, et cetera. And, and uh, you know, I'm really tackling this uh, Lent project where I do one video a day for every day of, of Lent, and I'm staying true to it, et cetera. But, you know, it's it's definitely put an extra, I don't want to say burden, but it's definitely put an extra thing I have to do in my daily life every day. And overall, things are getting quite exhausted. Uh, getting quite exhausted inside of, of me. And what do I mean? Well, I use today as an example. I'm recording this um, on a Saturday. Uh, what is it? The 10th of March. So one day I've gone from giving a talk to little kids to doing a long web, a webinar for the uh, Carmelite Institute, uh, offering several masses, one in English, one in Spanish, dealing with a multitude of people that are ill coming to the parish that want prayer, blessing, and et cetera, and a multitude of of languages and etc so and then running back and forth over the bronx and cars and on foot etc not bad for an empty but you know all these things you know so when i talk about exhaustion it's not just a physical exhaustion i try to walk five miles a day you know but then there's the emotional exhaustion of always having to be on your a game in relationship to your emotions because people need you at a certain level of availability to them so they can, you know, seek the help and the guidance that they need during their times. But then there's the psychological of, of taking on all these things um, that are going on and, and really trying to make sure my mind is really there with the person and not just sort of, you know, up in sort of the milieu of consciousness somewhere thinking about other things. And then, you know, there there is the, the physical presence. You know, I'm not an amputee, so, you know, I can't do as much as I like physically, you know, but dealing with the pain of that every day. And then, you know, just... Ooh, tackling all these things, it just weighs down the heart. And this is just one day out of that, you know, when I have to fight, I have to literally like fight just to get out of, you know, and maybe not literally sense the word. I'm not like punching people down, but, you know, I've missed <laughs> me a cope on the whole word usage. But, um, you know, I have to really struggle just to get my day off. I mean, everybody needs a Sabbath. And obviously, Sunday can't be the Sabbath for, for a priest because we have mass, confessions, and a variety of uh, other things, you know. So if I don't physically leave the Bronx, if I don't physically get out of this area, I don't get my day off because something will always happen. Something will always come up. There will always need to be something done. And the question is, does it need to be done now or can it be done later? You know, and all these things really weigh down the heart after a while. Uh, and during our time in formation, what happens is when a man is, is, you know, journeying through the Carmelite formation program, formation program is simply this. It's a multitude of different periods in one's life within the religious institution where they are worked upon and challenged to cultivate the necessary means of, of uh, embracing this lifestyle and embracing this call of a Carmelite. And a part of the formation process is one's internship. That's where one sort of steps back and leaves sort of the realm of academia. They're under simple vows, so they're they're called to live poverty, chastity, obedience, and they go out and they live in a regular community outside of a formation house, and they work on trying to integrate, integrating their, you know, personal lives, their family lives, their ministerial lives, their community lives, their prayer lives, and all these sort of things to get that balance, you know, because what happens is there'll be all these sort of things pushed to the extreme. That's why and particularly from the literature, you know, young priests really have to worry about, you know, the issue of activism, of always having to do, 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 until finally they just get to the point of exhaustion that they make terrible decisions that could harm people, you know. And I make this, and this is going to go out on Sunday the 11th, you know, what is it, Ladare Sunday, so it's supposed to be, you know, um, like rejoicing, you know, this this moment of, of we're halfway through Lent and et cetera. And, you know, I just getting tired. 
you know, getting tired because there's always something going on, always something coming up. And I just wanted to make this to help people understand a little bit out there what's going on with the uh, with a priest life because you may not be aware. Sometimes people just think, oh, they come and they they offer mass and then they go back and they just do what they're going to do. Well, there's a lot more to it than that because you know there's the physical demands of one's own well-being of having to run around and do all these things. You know, the emotional aspect the psychological aspect, the spiritual aspect, you know, without prayer, I would have already burnt out. Just being honest with y'all. If I, you know, didn't have my great formators that helped me to grow into becoming a Carmelite and stealing within me the necessary need for regular daily prayer, spiritual direction, and my yearly retreat, I, I, I would not be in a good place right now. You know, as we all are taking on extra stuff right now in relationship to Lent, you know, what are we fasting from? What are we giving up with our alms, you know, to support people? How are we cultivating maybe a richer, uh, deeper prayer life and et cetera? You know, these things take a toll because, you know, we have all these different types of energy, which I've been mentioning about physical, psychological, emotional, spiritual, all these sort of things that can really be taxed. And one of the fundamental aspects of the Carmelite spirituality is the need for a community. You know, there's no sort of solitary Christian. Even the hermits sort of form a community around each other. So we can never be afraid to ask for help. Why is that? Peter himself, as he went out to Jesus on the water and was beginning to sink because of his lack of faith, still cried out for help. You know, Jesus tells us to pray that the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. We had the few that we have to not be afraid to ask for help. And this is where pride is so, so dangerous, you know, and you can be like, well, I'm not a prideful person. Well, if you are not asking for help because you're worried about, you know, what others perceive of you, which is a vain thing to worry about. But if you're in the sense that I don't need others help, that I can do this all, I got it all together. And you keep saying, I, 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 you're going down a dang, uh, for lack of a better word, road damnation, you know, because the quickest way to hell is to be utterly clutching to your eye because we're called to turn towards Jesus and to focus on Jesus and, you know, be open up to Jesus. And sometimes that means we have to be open up to the others around us to say, hey, I need help. I can't do this. No is an important word to learn, particularly if you're a minister. No is a very important word to learn. You know, I would have so much more doing to people. Everyone's like, Father. And I know when I hear Father and I hear a certain tone of it, Somebody wants something. And it's usually they want, you know, me to do something when they could easily do it themselves. And a part of me helping them to grow as a person is to say, no. If you think that's important and you think you got a call to do it, then do it. I'll support you. I'll help you the best I can, but I can't do it for you. So I just wanted to make this a little, you know, more of a personal vlog to let everyone know of, you know, that I'm sort of getting tired. You know, Lent, this is my first Lent as a priest. One of the reasons I wanted to do this Lent challenge was to be able to share these experiences. And I made some very emotionally charged videos recently on, on immigration issue and manhood and et cetera. You know, and those do take a toll. So I just ask for you to keep me in your prayers. And uh, please, if you got some time, make sure you're sharing my videos and, and, and getting them out there to people. You know, I really do these things because I believe that they can help people. And I've been getting so many messages and comments and et cetera that just been amazing but um you know like i'm saying i want to be honest with everybody out there that's really giving me their time in relationship to my social media work so you know i'm at a point of exhaustion does that mean i'm weak yep does that mean i'm human yep does that mean it's shameful no no it's okay we all get tired it's what you do about it that's important and right now i'm reaching out to say hey keep me all in your prayers you know for the people here at the parish i work at in the bronx keep them in your prayers wonderful people here that are really just um, helping me to grow and to find my voice as a priest. And I'm very grateful for, him, for it. But, uh, you know, we are a people of God. We are a pilgrim people. We're all journeying on the way that Christ himself has prepared for us, this way of salvation, this narrow road, etc. So keep me in your prayers. Know I'm praying for you. Thank you again, my brothers and sisters, for your time. Know that I'm praying for you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Hey Carmels, thanks again for your time. If you haven't yet, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and give it a little like. And I really ask you if you have maybe some advice or whatnot for me relationship to deal with sort of this moment of, in this period of tiredness of being worn down a little bit, leave that comment down below. It, I'm just really hoping we get a conversation going. I really love reading them. And I have learned many awesome, great things from a variety of comments that have already happened. And I invite you to also, you know, step up a little bit, take one of my videos you really like, share it in your social media stuff. You know, that's part of being part of the Carmelo clan. Is we gotta support each other, we gotta help each other, we gotta raise each other up. Thanks again. I really do appreciate your time. <laughs>